it is a pleasure to be here at Vincent Salon in Fort Myers, Florida. How many of you are cutting a lot of bobs today? You see a lot of bobs out there. Now, there's a lot of really good things that are happening with a bob, but eventually, would you agree that our guests are going to get tired of a bob? And they're going to wonder what's happening, what's next. What I want to talk about today is beyond the bob, where we're going to be going. Here's what's happening. Skirts have gotten shorter, waistlines are getting higher, belts are getting wider. So sh hair has gotten shorter. Now, you're having your guests for the first time cut their hair short. They're going out there, outside, and they're meeting people, and people are going, oh, I love your hair. It really looks good. You really like it? So here's what's going to happen. Two things are going to happen. These people are going to go shorter, or they're going to start to do what? Grow, Grow it, it out. out. So what I want to talk about is give you a pattern that you can work with in an existing bob, or a pattern that you can work with medium length to long hair. And the idea today is it's all about disconnection. It's all about what? Disconnection. Now, do you want to see what we're going to cut? Come on, you want to see what we're going to cut? Yeah. All right, let me show you. Come on, give me a drum roll. Come on, give me a drum roll. All right. Okay. Here she is. But check her out. She looks like she has a bob, doesn't she? Yeah. But look at it. Uh, now, here's what I want you to see is there's a hidden bob inside. Today, it's about versatility. Not everybody wants their hair cut short, but sometimes they do want a bob, don't they? But here's the idea. If you take this, and I'm going to teach you how you can dress this and make it look short. So you just put in a little ponytail. You just have her shake it. Out comes bits, maybe long bits, depending upon the length that you're going to cut. And she can dress it into a bob. But now what I want you to look is look at how it's sectioned. Look at how it's detached. It's all about disconnection and the way we're cutting it. Believe it or not, how many of you, by a show of hands, think that this might have been textured into, maybe sliced into by a show of hands? Excellent, great. If you look at it, all this haircut is cut completely, completely blunt. It hasn't been sliced into. It hasn't been texturized at all. It's all cut blunt. <laughs> hey, did you see that shape? Did you notice that you can't see where the disconnection is? Now, you're probably wondering, disconnection? My client won't go for that. Well, let me say this. Disconnection is the strongest element of design today, allowing for versatility. Think about a shape that is so convertible with looseness, movement, and a frothy sense of volume. Disconnection is today's texture. Now let's get back to the class to see how it's done. Here's what's going to happen now. I'm going to take you through step one. The first section we're going to take, she will end up with the left side part. Now I am going to take her length a little bit shorter on this. But she will end up with it being more medium length to long. I don't want anything short on this. We're going to start on her right side. So we go right to the right recession area. And I want you to just stay a little bit lower behind, below that. So I go right about in that area. Sam, if I wanted to find a different way to find that, how would I find it? Take your comb at the corner of her eye, place it on a diagonal where it hits the hairline. That's where you want to go and insert your comb there. What I don't want you to do is go so high up. So let's make sure we just don't go so high up. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to follow this, just like we would do a, a regular horseshoe type of section. But this season, the sections are more rounded, and we're going to drop it down. So as I come through this section, I start to drop it down. We're going to drop it down all the way down to the left corner of the hairline. And I'll let you all take a look at that. So what, once you have that, I want you to step to the front. You're going to take everything, comb it up to you, and you'll see why, because of the way we're going to graduate it comb it all the way up to you and isolate up at the top. So I bring it up, making sure that you release and comb through all of your tangles. I want you to really detangle this. Here's why. Because we're going to blow dry as we go, there's no sense in wrapping this all up when it's tangled. It's going to be, you're going to be working twice as hard to detangle it. So get through all your tangles. The product of choice we're working with when we cut is we're working with the clear moisture line in Redken. We're working with polishing prep. And the reason we're working with polishing prep is it helps to detangle and it helps to maintain a little bit of moisture in the hair. Once we have that section, isolate it now. And now you can start to see where I took this section. It came down to the left corner of her hairline and it rounds itself down to that. So I'm just checking that. Now this is just a little bit too rounded for me here as it comes like this. So I'm just going to come back. And the sectioning is critical. The section is what? Critical. It's very critical that you get your sectioning. So come back through. Watch, I'm just going to take this and draw down and not round so much. There, that's better. So it's a little bit more of a, a line to it. But it's a rounded diagonal line. Okay, so that's isolated. 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to separate center back. I isolate the left of that. Then we're going to come over to front to back. Come over to where? Okay, so we separate front to back. So I separate that. Back. So I isolate the left of that. Then we're going to come over to front to back. Come over to where? Okay, so we separate front to back. So I separate that and I isolate that. Now, remember, the objective is I want this haircut to look like it's been razored or very textured. Now we're going to start, we have our sectioning from the recession, just below it slightly, all the way down, curved and rounded, to the left corner of the hairline, not the left corner back. Then we separate center back, then we separate front to back. We're going to take this first section now, and I'm going to stand on the side here so that you can see it. I want the head in the upright position, so I bring her straight up, straight up. I'm going to determine where I want my length. See, I'm holding this before I cut it. I just say, ooh, I like that. That's great length right there. So you could see before I cut it, just take a piece out of where you're going to cut it and see if that's what you like. Come in and make your cut. Keep it your finger angle nice and horizontal. Once I have that, I release. Now we'll look what happens. Look at how it's going to look like it's sliced into, but look at the degree of shortness. So that was part A. The left of center is A. Now we're going to go to the right of center, this is B, here comes B now. Watch my comb. White teeth of the comb comes in horizontal. From here, we shift to a diagonal. So it comes at horizontal at the base, it shifts to a diagonal. Now that sets up my combing angle, and I comb. Can you see how that I've over-directed that section? So B is over-directed, and I connect it right into my line. And now I release, watch what happens. I'm going to start to use the hairline to just give me variations of length. So you're going to start to see these little holes appear. But the holes are great because that's usually what you're doing when you're slicing it. Okay, now here we go to the front. That was B, now let's go to C. I'm going to stand behind her. So Sam, could I have done A behind her? Yes, let me show you. Here's A. I'm here. So I could stand right behind her and do this, could I not? Okay, B, I could stand behind her, could I not? Horizontal to a diagonal, and I'd be right in this position, okay? Now, C, front, right front. Comb vertically, back to you. Then come back underneath with the comb horizontally. Now, can you see what I've done to that front? I've extremely over-directed that. So I lift up, I lift up till I see my edge here. There's my edge, and I cut another horizontal line. Now I release this, and when I release this, look at the edge I've got. You can just start to see, now you're going to start to see various points of length, leave it alone. Remember, we can cut the length after we're done. Blow dryer, one of my favorite tools. Now imagine today I'm blow drying as I go for maximum results with minimum effort. This will allow for a quality polished finished and remember, my friends, product is not an option, it's a necessity. Now let's get back to the class. We're going to take Redken, a line, control of 12. When we blend, the product that we want most dominant goes into our hand first. The product least dominant goes into our hand second when you blend. Now I'm going to add a little slip to it. So my product of choice is Heat Glide, Emulsify, now apply your product. Here's the cool side to this. You ever do a haircut wet, then you go in and apply your product. I don't know about you, but I always applied my product only to the what? The top. top, and I never got it inside. Can you see by blow drying as you go, you're going to be able to have product application. Mm -hmm. Can you see that blow dry as you go, now is when I'm going to communicate to the guests what it is I'm working with and why I'm working with it. Picking it up. Turning my nozzle the way that I want to work my brush. Did you see what I just did there? So I'm not just picking my brush, my blow dryer up with a nozzle like that and putting my arm and my wrist in a bad position. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to strengthen my arm back up. See that what I just did? By just turning and holding my nozzle. Now let's turn it on. Look at the brush I have in my hand. Look how I'm using it this season. Nozzle is not an option, it's a necessity. You're going to control the heat a lot more, the flow of air. Now I want you to listen to how long this blow dryer is on. It's not going to be long for a long period of time. And look how slow I'm working with this. Sam's not an aerobic blow dryer. This is an aerobic blow dryer. 
We'll look at the finish. Head down for me, please. Okay, I'm gonna come through, take my section, look at the width of the dryer, okay? It allows me to lift a section, come underneath, hold and blow dry. So I can slice, hold and blow dry. Once again, I just place my brush in, the nozzle falls it, and I move at a slow pace. Treat the hair like silk, treat it gently. It's about the integrity of the hair. Notice the line I cut was all blunt. Now look at the nozzle where it's placed. It's placed on this side of the brown brush, rather than this. If I do this, now all I have is hair, can you see front row? That little hair is flying straight off. Those will end up as flyaways. So I'm controlling my flyaways by bringing that nozzle on this side of the brush. I'm gonna sink this area in. I don't want a lot of volume in this. Let the haircut give you the volume on its own. Now when I look at the shape, look how it looks like it's been sliced into already. And all we did was lift it up and cut a blunt line to that. Okay, brush on top. In the nape area, the nape area sinks in. When we want volume in the crown area, opposites attract. Sink in the nape area and you're going to have an illusion of more volume. Here's the natural common tendency. The natural common tendency is to bring the brush underneath. And when you do this, you're filling this area in. So this area gets fat and full, correct? Now it evens to your volume. But when I crease or I just press that in, sink that in, this has the illusion of more volume. Once again, control through. Application of product is critical. Notice how much control I had application of my product because I'm working with it in a section area. I'm not working with it, just distributing it through all the way through the head. Now look at this hole I got here. Love that hole, right there. Because I can always come up and even. That hole could be something that's to my advantage. So wait until afterwards. Now how long was the blow dryer on? Yeah, not in five minutes, just a short period of time. So now we've had an opportunity to experience blow dry as you go. And I want you to notice how I'm going to pick up a flat iron and a round brush versus a flat iron and a comb. Why, you ask? Because gone is dead straight hair. By flat ironing with a round brush, we are able to create more shine, get more bevel on the hair, and imagine more movement. We can also get that frothy kind of volume. Now, I want you to listen closely to the principles of flat ironing. That's right, principles to flat ironing. So let's get back to the class as I'm about to pick up my flat iron and a round brush. Three principles to a flat iron. Allow me to share them with you. Number one is heat. Heat changes the bonds in the hair. Number two is compression. Compression is when I squeeze that flat iron. Number three is tension, when I pull that flat iron. So watch this. If I'm using it like this, which principle am I not using? Yes, thank you, it's the tension. So I'm not using tension. Heat is there, correct? And compression is there. But what's not there is tension. Because my objective here is not to go in and straighten the hair. My objective is to give it movement, give it a polish, because of what the heat does to the cuticle. It'll close, it'll expand, but with a boar bristle brush, that will help to close that cuticle, give me a bevel, and give me the movement. Now, as you're working with your flat iron, I want you to watch my hands work and in relation with my brush now. So the idea this season is this. The brush catches it. Please make sure that you detangle each section. Don't crease your flat iron without detangling. So I'm just there. I detangle, detangle. Good. I'm ready to go, ready to go. Iron comes in and I roll. Notice how my hand hits mid shaft to ends and I roll. Mid shaft to ends and I roll. So all I'm doing, don't, what I don't want you to do is this. Come up to the scalp, close, and then out. You're going to get a crease at the scalp if you do that. So it's just mid shaft to end. So it's just, this is your blow dryer, your source of heat. Now, let your heat work for you. Is this making sense? Okay, now you can start to see the result I get. I was able to achieve, and look at how polished it is. That's what's cool about this. Now, come to me with the board, because you're going to get ready to go and do step one. Here on step one, we took it right from the recession area. We came around just like a horseshoe, started to drop it down. We dropped it all the way down to the left corner of the hairline. Then we came in and we took down center back. We took a center back and we took 
front to back. We isolated those two, so you have three separate areas. A, left of center, B, right of center, and C, the right front area. A, we lifted it straight up out of its natural fall. We determined where we want the length, which is in this particular case today is going to be about the base of the mannequin. We cut a horizontal line. We take section B, we elevate that right up, we connect in with section A. C is where your over direction comes in now. C, you stand directly behind and you comb vertically. The comb comes underneath horizontally. You're standing behind and you cut another horizontal line to that point of reference. What questions do you have? Yes, please, Lois. Sam, on section B, you're combing it up horizontally, but cutting a little at a diagonal or cutting it horizontally? I'm cutting that slightly on a diagonal. Why? Now that has over direction in it. Is that right, guys? Yeah. All right, so please put some over direction in it. In my drawing here, this is slightly over directed. You can start to see it from here. I took it out of its natural fall. Does everybody understand that? Say yes. 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 So now, how do I know if I'm doing that right, Sam? Here's how I'm going to set you up, Lois. On B, comb goes horizontal. It shifts to a diagonal. Now it comes straight to you. That will automatically set up that a small amount of over direction in this area, and it will automatically set up that si slight diagonal finger angle. Okay? Good question. Thank you for the question. All right, hands up. Hands up. You're going to give me a yes on step one. You can do this, can't you? Yes. All right, ready? One, two, three. Yes. yes. Okay? Let's head to the to-do area, and we're going to do that. Now, we have just seen step one. Let's go take a look at the do step one. Brandy, nice sectioning. Right at the recession area here, and then I love how you brought it around to the left corner of the hairline. Excellent. Then you took your center back. Now, watch center back. There's center back right there. So see how you're just to the right of center. So I'm going to suggest that you bring this se section just a slight over to the left and center. Okay, great front to back. All right, so watch. Great on step A, we bring it up. Now remember, cut over your hand, cut upon the palm, excuse me, or cut over your hand, whichever is most comfortable. Okay, second step, here comes B now. I like to stand on the side, it's a lot easier. Now here, to a diagonal, see how I use the white teeth, it picks it all up. Now, once I'm there, I can come in with my fine teeth and clean. Now, what I want you to be aware of, when you're combing this, notice how I don't comb into what I have sectioned. So as I bring it up, the comb comes away from the head. Now my hand slides back up. Secondly, look at my degree of elevation. It's not here, not here, not here. It's up, wrapped onto the head. So my palm of the hand, I like to sit it on top of the head. There, I'm right there. Now reach, come around, and left hand slide underneath my left hand. Excellent, here comes your comb, and I want you to comb to that position now. Okay, so she's gonna comb to that position. Excellent, excellent, beautiful, cut the darn thing. Excellent, now watch this. Now I want you to learn now what these lines do. So now follow this line back. Look at that line. See how it got longer over here, but it got shorter right there. Isn't that interesting now? Now, now you're gonna have different types of links. That's exactly what we want because it almost looks like it's razored or sliced into. All right, give her a round of applause, good job. All right, now, watch this now, stay with me. Stay with me on C, watch this now. Okay, you slide right over here, love. Now, you're going to comb this, what's your name again? Brittany. I knew that, okay, hold on to that, Brittany. You comb that back, Brittany, like this, vertically. Don't disrupt your sectioning. So I comb that back. Once I'm here, watch what I do. Comb comes underneath, it catches everything. So because it catches everything, now I got to get this elevation up. I got to get it up where I was. Remember, because that was wrapped around the head. So I'm here to there. I go horizontal to that point. Bingo. I cut that. All right. Now your left hand underneath mine. And you're going to comb that. Recomb that. Vertical first. Back to you. Move your beautiful self right there. Good. Now comb comes underneath horizontally. Okay, good, excellent, good, you're doing good. Now take your comb underneath, horizontally, and let's go to the wide teeth. Excellent, you're doing good, Brittany. Up, now watch it catch everything. Here comes your guide, there it is right there. Now take your hand underneath, beautiful. Now keep it horizontal. There we go, now comb that position again. Comb up to that position again. You're doing great, Brittany. Keep it horizontal, beautiful. 
Now look for the guide. There it is, cut it. Did you see how she did that, guys? Okay, if you got it, go back and do it now. Now watch this. When you release that, look at the length. See, it gave us this length in the front, and it looks like it's all sliced into. I love it. Okay? All right, give me five on that. Good job. Thank you. All right. Now, I want you to go back to that action again. Just get the action of each A, B, C, just so your hands re memorize that, then you're set to blow dry. Remember, heat glide in a line. Apply those two and blow dry and flat iron. Okay, good job. All right, so now vertical back to you. Excellent, great. Comb comes horizontal. Now shift your left hand horizontal. There, more like this. El get your elbow up. That a girl, good. Now up, comb up. Comb up, good. Excuse me for standing behind you. Now keep combing. You're doing good. Now turn horizontal. Excellent. Now comb up even higher. Combing up even higher. There we go, good. And freeze and cut. Excellent, that was beautiful. Nice vertical combing, nice horizontal combing. Now watch what it did. Let's take a look at it. Comb it all the way down. Beautiful. Now can you feel it looks like it's razor? Mm -hmm. How cool is that? And it's you haven't you didn't come in and slice into it, you haven't texturized it, you elevated it, you cut a blunt line, another blunt line, and another blunt line. Okay? And lots of texture to it. Now here's what's interesting about this. Check this out. Look how long it is here. Look at that. Now watch this. Look how short it is there. And now what created that? What do you think created that? Um, over direction. Was it over direction? Part. Yeah, so look at this is higher. Mm -hmm. So that traveled a shorter distance to the cutting position, and this traveled a longer distance. How cool is that? So what you didn't do is cut a finger angle and go like this, short to long. You used elevation and over direction and one blunt line to create that. Pretty cool, eh? Awesome. All right, good job, my dear. Thank Off you. you go now. You can use my brush here. Now watch the difference. Now watch how I'm going to add a little bit more stretch to this, and then I'm just going to give it a nice soft kick. So now watch my brush. It rolls, it rolls, it rolls, it rolls, it rolls. And now look at how I just got that to flex. See the difference on the finish on that? Okay, now watch. Look at this area. Come on, guys. Come close to me. I showered for you. Come on. Okay, check this out. Look at this area. Now I'm talking about a polished finish. I want you to work on that. Look at that area there. Now watch the difference here when Sam goes into it. Number one. Watch the mechanics. Number two, look at my brush. Here. Now watch this. Slow motion. And I catch. Now have I closed my iron yet? No. Lois, do you trust me? Okay, point your finger at me. Okay, now check this out, guys. Don't move, Lois. <laughs> now, Lois, you tell me when it's getting hot. It's warm. Now, Lois, tell me when it's getting warmer. It's warm. Now, Lois, tell me when it's getting warmer. Well, I don't want you to close. No, no, I won't close it on you, Lois. Look at me, Lois, I promise. Is it getting warmer? It's warm. Okay, now, did I close it? No. What changes that alters the direction of hair? Heat. Heat. Are you getting this, guys? I want you to understand. The object of what I'm trying to do is make your life easier behind a chair. Number one, so you don't have to talk so loud. Number two, you don't have the pressure of a blow dryer constantly in your hand and your muscles doing this. How light is this and how easy is this? Now watch this section. So Lois told me it's heat and I never closed it. So now, have I closed it? But do you think the hair is getting hot? Yeah, yeah but now look where I close it, mid shaft to ends. Now look how I'm doing. I just slide in hand, slide in hand. Now I'm gonna stretch a little bit more. I'm gonna stretch, look what I did with the brush. Stretch, stretch. Stretch, now I'm gonna stretch, now I'm gonna sit, sit, sit. Now look at this section now. Can you see the difference, guys? All right, let's do it again now. Now when I want something to flip up, watch what I do. Palm of my hand faces the head. So for example, look, let's flip up the edge of this. The haircut, how cool is that? That's what I'm talking about. One sweep of heat, now that's me blow drying. Are you getting this? Yeah. Say yeah. yeah. Okay, now look at the difference. Look at that. Now look at her finish. You see her haircut was there, but when I came over to her mannequin, I couldn't really tell. Until I got the finish, can you see it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. You see, you see what I'm talking about. Maximum results with minimum effort. Did you get that? It is the best thing. 
Here's the idea, guys, for you at home. You're taking the blow dryer, you're putting it in your hand, and you're working so hard with the pressure on that. What we're trying to do here at Vincent Salon in Fort Myers, Florida, we're taking the blow dryer out of the hand. It's an experience for, for our new guest, Erica, and she's loving it because she's smiling already and we're only on the first step of the haircut. How cool is that? Now we've just seen to do step one. Let's move to step two, the C. All right, great job on step one. Any questions on step one before I move on with step two? Yes, please. I was just wondering if you could go over section C, the way you pull it back and make sure it's horizontal or the way you cut it. So now C is the right front area, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, correct? Yes. Yes. All right, we comb this back vertically. So now notice how I comb that back vertically. I'm gonna give you some helpful hints now. Comb vertical, grab vertical. So always remember this, look at the position of my comb. My hand's gonna take the same position. Now my comb's gonna come underneath horizontal. Now what do I do? No. Go horizontal. Now I keep combing up, 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 up until I get to the same elevated point. Once I'm there, I cut my horizontal line. The line I cut is horizontal. Now because of this stream here, you go there, it's gonna get too short. So you. Position your body square to the back of the head. Does that help you out, my dear? Okay, round of applause. And I comb, watch what's gonna happen. What would happen? It's gonna get shorter, why? Because of my body position. So what do I need to do with my body? Watch this. Thank you. So when I'm here, there's less over direction. You want maximum amount of over direction on this. So now I'm gonna give you a top view of this. Check this out. So when you look at this, Look at the over direction. It's square right back to you. It's not here. You go there, it's gonna to get too short. So you position your body square to the back of the head. Does that help you out, my dear? Okay, round of applause for the question. Great question. <laughs> Permission to move on to step two. Yes. Okay, right, here we go now. Take, release your section, your section that you have isolated, that gets released. Comb this back to you. And I want you to reach for Redken Clear Moisture Polishing Prep. At the same time, if it's dry, please spritz it and wet it down. What I don't want you to do this season is wet these down soaking wet like this. Spritz them from a distance. Sam, what about what I dried underneath? Don't worry, control your spritz when you're spritzing. Now, with disconnection, in the old days when I would cut disconnection, I would have to go in and put a bunch of clips here. And then I would take my next section so that I wouldn't pick up that section. But this is dry and that is wet. So they're going to separate themselves. So step two. Go about an inch above step one. One inch would be from your knuckle of your thumb to the tip of your thumb. That's an inch. Place my comb there. Follow it. But this time this curves around to the top of the ear. Take a look at this section. See how it goes to the top of the ear? Take the excess hair you're going to isolate, comb it towards you. Please, make sure you comb out your tangles. Because I'm drying as I go, rather than this being all knotted up, it's just going to dry that way. You're working twice as hard to get it out. Once you have this, combed out, isolated, in front. So I take this and I isolate this section. Now, we take Everything that we have here, watch this. See how my hand went across that? How easy that is to get that? I know where I'm at. Now take a look at the section we have. All the way to the top of the ear, an inch above where our step one started, around, just below or at the crown to the top of the ear. Now, subdivide this. Center back. So we separate center back, just like we did in step one. Give this a little twist. Okay, now section front to back, just like we did in step one. There's front to back. Give this a little twist. Now in step two, instead of starting in the back, we're going to start in the front. And we're going to put our bob inside of this. So I want you to totally forget about what you did in step one. Totally forget about it. 
So we elevate this straight up, straight up. Now we hold where we think our length should be. I want you to drop and cut the length to the lip, right to that lip area. That's going to be your bob. So now I drop this section down. I measure it. I eyeball it right there, about somewhere right in there. Doesn't have to be exact. Right there. I reach for my scissor, and you're going to cut a horizontal line. So I come in, and I just cut a horizontal line right across. My elevation is what? 90, vertical, straight up. And we're cutting a straight line. This will detach itself from what I did underneath. Now I move to B. That was A, the right front. B is to the right of center. Say yes if you're with me. Yes. yes. Okay. Square your body to this. To the section, not the head. Did that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to square my body to the section. So Sam, you just lost me. Watch this now. Okay. All right. Eyes here. Look, at here's my section right there. Where's my body? Is my body in a good position? No. Good. Tell me when. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Now I'm square of the section. That's what I'm talking about, being square of the section. So now I'm going to square myself to that section. I pick up some of what I previously cut. That acts as my guide right there. I come up with that. That's horizontal. There, and we come through, and we make our cut again. Okay, release. Now watch the third. A, let me show you. Right of center. C is left of center. I lift this up. Straight up. Straight up. I bring this back to me. So am I over-directing this? Yes. yes. I lift this up. Here comes my guide again. Now I go diagonal down. I go do what? Let me show you. See that? So I'm cutting from that point of reference that I left off horizontal. So I went horizontal, horizontal, diagonal down. So now I come diagonal down. Right there. Down. Now what this does, Sam, why are you going diagonal down? Because I'm releasing more length here. That's why I'm releasing more length. So I release the length right there. That finger angle allows me to adjust it and release length where I need to release it. Comb through it, comb through it, and now I'm ready to dry. Now, if you don't get the finger angle steep enough, look what you're going to end up with. A little point right there. You dry it first, then you come back, and if you want to freehand that little point off, you can. Because why do I say dry first? Because you may dry it and like it. You may want to keep it. Now, how cool is this, guys? I did step two. Took me a moment to cut it, but now what am I doing? Talking product again. I'm talking about why am I doing this, maybe. So I'm having more time now in that 45-minute span to communicate. Communication builds wealth. Communication does what? Builds wealth. wealth. Come on, it does what? Builds wealth. Excellent, great. Who's got a dollar bill? Come on, Vinny, you got some money on you? Give me a dollar bill. I'm not going to give it to you. You got a dollar bill? You still have a dollar from last time. Come on, give me some money. Watch. How much you got? Give me five dollars. You got five dollars? Yeah, but here we go. <laughs> Check this out. Communication builds what? Wow. All I had to do was ask and I got it. That's all I had to do was ask and I got it. Here's the point I'm trying to make. We can't assume they don't want to disconnect their hair. We can't assume that they don't want to purchase the blend that I'm recommending. Heat glide and a line. So we can't assume that. Now, it's a matter of, Sam, I didn't used to have time to talk. Now you have time to talk. And now it's when I'm teaching her how to blow dry this. How cool is this? So now I'm going to teach her. What I want you to do, Erica, is I want you to wrap dry your hair. So you're going to wrap it around your head. So no more picking up a round brush and doing all of that kind of stuff. So I want you to take the paddle brush, and I want you to just separate the hair on one side, blow dry it all forward. This will help to stretch dry, and it'll get some moisture out. Look how I'm wrapping that section all the way around. Head up for me, please. Here. And around. Now I'm going to come back the opposite way. And I want you to start to learn, guys. You learn to use both of your hands when you blow dry. It just teaches you to be a little bit more ambidextrous. So we're here. So notice how I wrapped it one way. Head opposite way, please. I wrap it one way, and I wrap it the opposite direction. Once I get my moisture out, the dryer is what? 
thank you. And I now pick up my flat iron and my round brush. So once again, flat iron. Some key things I want to talk about now. The action of your right hand or whichever hand you choose to put the flat iron in. Watch what we're going to do. I'm going to detangle, detangle, detangle. Now I'm going to flat, flat, flat. Here's the idea. In, heat. Notice I haven't even closed yet. And I moved. Did you see that? So I start to move before I even close and I start to roll my hand. Place these sections on the brush. Some of you are like this. You just do this and then you're there and you're not rolling this brush. Make sure you roll. Okay? So notice how I'm working. I worked my way from the front all the way to the back. Working with your flat iron now. Once again rolling. Let the brush do the work for you. Let that brush do the work for you. Now once I'm there, I'm going to take a little bit of rough pace. So even as I'm working, I'm applying my afterheat product. So I'm just taking a small amount of rough paste. And you can see how I'm doing even my finishing is step by step now. Instead of before, I would just jam through my finishing. I don't know about you guys, but I mean the blow dry was the least important to me. And shame on me. But it was more about speed, getting through it and getting dry. Two things, why? Because I needed to get them out because I took so long on the haircut, number one. But number two, I was excited to see the haircut. So you're excited to see it, so you find yourself really just jamming through that blow dry. Now look how cool that looks now, and that's step two. Now when you start to look at them, they don't look like they disconnect, do they? Matter of fact, do you see a hard line there? No. no. Now the reason you don't see that hard line is because this was elevated straight up. Had I done elevation here or here, then it would have fell harder. Come with me to the board. Let's take a look at step two and the sectioning on... Step two. There it is. Okay, here we are. Step two. The red was step one. We went about an inch above that. We came around to the top of the ear. So we went slightly above that. Once we did that, we took the right front, 2A, and we cut that first. We determined where we wanted to hit at the lip area. We lift that straight up and we cut a true horizontal line. Let that go. The next thing you do is you go to B. Square yourself back to B. So I square my body to that section, I lift that up, and I cut a straight square line. I go to C. I lift that straight up, and I cut what line? Diagonal going what? Down. Down. So that you get it shorter here. Here's why, guys. Look how much that travels to the cutting position. If I don't make this steep enough, you're going to get really long there. Just pick it up and you can change your angle. Or after you dry it, come back in and just piece that off. Be careful though, I'd wait till you dry it. Your over direction. On A, it's straight out from the head and up. B, you square yourself back to it so you can see some of it is in natural fall and some of it is over directed. Can you see that? Say yes. 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 All right. C, same thing. Right where it falls, square your body back there. That forces you to overdirect this. This hair is in natural fall, natural fall. When the head starts to round, now you're taking it out of natural fall. And your finger angle is diagonal down, so you get it shorter behind her left ear. Is everyone with me? Yeah. All yes. right. You ready to go cut it? Yes. Go do it. Step two now. Now, we've just seen the C in step two. Let's take a look at the do in step two. Okay, nice section, Rebecca. Good, beautiful. Okay, now, here's center back, right there. Good, good job. Excellent. Okay, now what I like to do, Rebecca, is I like to give this a little twist. So that way it stays there. Okay, now go to right front, the right front, separate the right front now. Good job, excellent. Now give the right, th this a little twist. That's a little area you're gonna cut now. There, that's step two. That's 2B. Now there's 2A. Now that goes straight up. Now she's going to elevate that straight up. Once you have that elevated, what do you use as your guide? The lip. The lip. Thank you very much. You're going to use the lip. Beautiful. That might be too long. There you go, about right there. Now eyeball that. Okay. And comb up to that. Right there. And cut a horizontal line. Beautiful. What's the next step she does? She moves her body position and centers her body to 2B. 
which is the right of center. So you're gonna move your beautiful self right there. Now you're gonna lift that section up and you're going to take some of what you just cut. Excellent, nice, Rebecca, doing great. And a horizontal line there, right across. Beautiful. Excellent. Now square your body to the mannequin, okay, to the head. Now you're gonna lift C up, and the only thing that changes is what? Yeah, your finger angle. So now all you do is take your finger angle and you cut diagonal going down. Everybody got that? Yeah. Okay, back to your mannequin and cut it now. Back to your mannequin and cut it. Good job. So now she's got that whole section, that C, and she goes diagonal down. Excellent. Okay. Beautiful. And then boom, she's done. Release it. Now watch what happens. This should give me a point of length right there. See that? Leave that. Look at the point of length you have up here. Can you see how they're kind of like bangled to each other? Mm -hmm. That's what you want. Leave it alone. Afterwards, you can come over. Always come back in and clean up your length. Okay? okay? Now, I'd recommend you blow dry right. and flat iron. Great use of a vent brush. Allows that flow of air to pass through. And now, what I want you to do is keep it flat on that head. Keep working it flat on that head. There you go. Good. Nice haircut. I love the variations of length. Now, what's interesting about this is look how you can't see that line on this side. Isn't that cool? It flows in. Yeah, exactly. And you should have, here's her bob. Here's that length on that bob. Nice length right at the lip area. Good job, looking really good. What I love about this is the idea, look at, the, look at your ends. Look how sliced they into. Now some people might think that looks a little bit too frayed or too thin. That's why, that's why I want you to start thinking inside out. Because I could mm -hmm. always come back in and do what? Boom, and now okay. look, the weight is back into it. Okay. Okay, good job, okay. give me five. Good stuff. Now, how are you feeling about blow drying as you go? I'm feeling good about it. Yeah, what's good about it? Um, I like the fact that I'll be able to talk more about the product. Good. Because I feel like I either talk about it really quick in the beginning and then really quick in the end. Good. And it's not enough time to like talk about how great it is. You know? So can, it t can you see that because you're stopping and blow drying, it's giving you an opportunity to have that communication that we've lacked for a long period of time because we've been so focused on getting them in, getting them out, but we're so focused on our technical part of this, what we do, that we lose focus on telling them what we're doing, why we're doing it, and what we're using, how we're using it, and why we're using it. Cool? All right, excellent. Keep working, love. Good job. Okay. I want you to not start thinking about how you're doing this. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a slice, and I'm going to work with just this section. Now watch what, after I'm done with this section. So you want to be able to control what it is that you're doing here. So I'm here, now there, now watch. I'll take that aside and I'll take another slice. You see what I just did? Because I'm just working mid shaft to ends. See that? If some of that other section comes in there, I'm fine with that. Here's what I don't want you to do, is come in and take a big slice like this. Now you got that thick of a section. Watch what will happen. When I lift this up, and you detangle all this. Now watch, if I pinch and place my flat iron in there, and I pinch, can you see what I'm doing to the underneath? I'm creasing that underneath. And can you imagine with the degree of shortness, you're really creasing that. So that's why I want you to stay with slicing. Would you agree with me that the first time you do something, it's not easy at the first time. Second time, it's great. Good job, Chris. Perfect. Let's see Thank one you. more, let's see your action again. Let's see if I can give you any more coaching on your action. Come on guys, come close. Now the other thing too is don't worry about all the variety of links that you see. All those variety of links, they're cool. You work with them. That's the idea. Nice. Oh, you've gotten really good with it now. Now roll that brush. Let that boar bristle work for you. Some of you aren't letting that boar bristle brush work with you enough. So what do you mean, Sam? After I've done with it, I roll the brush on there as that hair cools. That's smoothing that cuticle, adding more shine to it. I noticed the brush was still warm when I took it out. The brush was warm. warm it was? Warm awesome. Was, so, yeah. Now roll, roll, roll. Good. And that little roll too, that action gives you a little bit more stretching. Okay? Good job, Chris. Great, Great job. We've just completed the do in step two. Let's go take a look at the C in step three. Any questions on step two? No. No questions? 
<laughs> I like that. No, I got step two. Yes, please. Sam, I was wondering if you could show me um, section C yes. on, on number two. Okay. Section C starts from where? The center back, and it goes all the way to the ear. So on section C, I have my center back. Watch this, guys. Look how easy this is here. Watch this. Watch step one drop out. There it is. See, now if you're just thinking, how am I going to recut this? I just showed you, your section is going to come back out. Now watch, here comes C now. C is diagonal down, and I'm lifting this straight up to get diagonal down, okay? Now, if I flatten this out like this, what happens over here? Gets longer. So if it's too long after you cut it, what do I need to do? Change, just change my finger angle. That's all you need to do. All right, cool. I want you to watch step three now. There's two parts to step three, A and B. Very simple. Now we take this and we comb her all the way back. Now I'm going to teach you something here. How many of you ever have a guest that says they part their hair on the side and they take their home comb and they're just like this? And they draw a line straight back. Okay, now what we need to do is get these people to understand by drawing a line straight back like that, what you've done is you've taken some hair and you put it in a position it doesn't belong, especially in the crown area. Right from the corner of her eye, I stand back. I center my body to that. I comb the hair back to me, center, and all I do is blouse that. Now look at her side part there. It evened out in the crown area. Now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to check and see if that's too low. That's way too low. So I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to look for another jump that's going to happen up above that that's going to give me another side part. There it is there. So now I'm going to check and see if I like that one. That one I like. Now, look where it goes to. That goes all the way to the back, to the top of the head. See that? So you bring that all the way back. This now, here, becomes step three. The left side of the part is step three. The right side of her part, you're going to isolate this. This will be step four. Now let's think about this. Hot tip coming your way now. She's going to end up with a left side part. We're blow drying as we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comb this forward and I'm going to twist it so it goes this way. So can you see I'm helping myself by setting this hair up to go that way rather than me doing this. Too many times I used to do this, just wad it up and do this. Now I'm working twice as hard to get that hair to respond the way that we want it to respond. So comb it forward. This is going to be step four, the right side of her part. Twist it. That's setting up that hair moving this direction. And I'm going to isolate this. Now after we have this isolated, you're coming to the left side. Two parts, A and B. Watch A and B now. I'm going to come through right from where that intersects. The left side part intersects in the crown. Place your comb right there. Once you have it there, I want you to curve a line to the corner of her eye. So I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to go here, just about to her eyebrow, right there. That's perfect. See that? This is part B, 3B. So this is going to get cut in a moment. That's 3B. This is 3A. Everybody with me? Say yes. yes. Okay, now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand directly behind her. I square myself back to her. Watch this. I comb this back vertically to me, so that comes back vertically. I'm going to take a little bit of polishing prep. Now don't get carried away with polishing prep, and notice I spray it from a distance. Now I can comb through that. Now I lift this straight up. So can you see this is cut just like step one on the right side? So I'm here. Now what do you think I'm, what's my position? It's what? Directly behind her, which is square to the head. I lift this up. I lift up the top crown, step two, center. There, that becomes my guide and I'm going to cut what kind of line? Horizontal. The line is going to be blunt. So now I come through, position my body, and we cut blunt straight across now. 
Okay, now watch this. This is so cool, guys. Look, people go, Sam, you're taking mass amount of hair in your hand now. So I'm doing what's known as condensed cutting. I'm condensing more hair together. When I take paper and put paper in a paper cutter and I go to, go to close the paper cutter, what happens to the paper? Do I get a true, true cut? No. What happens, Lois? The edges are a little shredded. Yeah, the edges are shredded. So what happens is they shred themselves. So you, can you see that? So by taking more mass of hair, instead of little bitty section, little bitty section, little bitty section, look what I just taught you guys. Rather than taking a section like this and bringing it up here and cutting that, then taking another section up here and cutting that, and then another section, cutting that, we're taking it all at once. Now watch the angle this created. Watch, here comes that bob. Look at it. You can see it from short to long, and I get the length where I want it. Did that make sense? Yes. And because I'm taking more mass of hair, it's actually being closed in that scissor, but it moves as it's being closed, so I get a softer edge. Oh, this is so cool. Now, watch B. Watch B now. Take B out. This is going to be the other side of the bob. So now, I'm going to swing my chair around. I'm going to stand on the side of the chair. I'm going to lift this straight up, all of it. Straight up, Sam. That is so much hair for me to handle from back there to up here. So, okay, if that is, split it in what? Half. Half. Lift this up, and now guess what I'm going to take? Step two again. There's my guide right there, and I cut square to that. Can you see that? Say yes. 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 I lift up the rest of this. I'm going to give you this view here. Now, watch what happens. Look at this angle I'm cutting. It's what? Horizontal, but look at the section, it drops what? Diagonal. Down, diagonal down. So what's happening with the front? Longer. Longer. So can you see how my section's rounded and curved, how it's creating variations of length in certain areas, but the lines I'm cutting are just straight horizontal lines? How many of you are getting it? Raise your hand if you're getting it. We're such a symmetrical society, and I've been taught that everything needs to blend, that my sections are very square and angular and symmetrical. This season, you need to change that. Round them and make them in asymmetrical inside, and you're going to start getting a sense of looseness in your haircuts, and you're not going to have to texture some more. Okay, now watch the blow dry now. I'm going to release three and four, and I'm going to blow dry both of those together. So, Sam, before you cut four, you're blow drying it? Yes. Did that make sense, guys? Yeah. Okay, follow me the flip chart. I don't want you to forget what I just did. Okay, step three. We've cut, we've cut one, we cut two, step three, we went and found her left side part. And it diagonals back. Goes all the way back to where step two ended. Then from there, put your comb and draw a curved line that comes all the way around to the corner of the eye. Corner of the eye. So I came from the back to the corner of the eye. So I came from here to where? Corner of the eye. The bottom is A, and the top is what? B. You're going to take A, A first. I'm going to stand directly behind the head, square to the head. So here you're seeing your over direction brought up. Here you're combing it back up to you, and you're cutting a horizontal line. Your guideline is what you had in step two, this area here. So that guideline, reach up in that crown area, grab it, boom, you'll see it. B. All I'm doing with B is take B, disregard what you did underneath A, lift this straight up, take a piece of hair, what you have there, and cut a straight horizontal line. And you're done. And then what are you going to do? Okay, you're going to take out the right side of part four and you're going to blow dry. Okay, what do I need to do first? product. Now, can you see how much control I've had of this haircut all the way through? Can you see how quick it's happening and all I'm doing is cutting blunt lines? Have I cut any texture at all so far? No. The two lines we're cutting here are what? Horizontal and horizontal. So it's two horizontal lines. Horizontal square to the back, step to her side, and cut horizontal. Boom, you're done. Now you blow dry. So I take all my product. 
Notice when I'm working with my product, I'm working mid shaft to ends. Mid shaft to ends. Don't work so much align and heat glide into that scalp area. Let it take care of itself. My polishing prep has been taking care of that too. So I'm here. Now I'm going to take my flat brush. I take the flat brush and the blow dryer and now I continue to wrap dry. Now, this is where Sam's going to suggest that you hand the blow dryer and the brush to the client. This is a great suggestion for all those salons out there watching this. My suggestion would be have a blow dry session a blow dry evening session where you're bringing in all those guests, do it once, er once every three months and you're bringing these guests in and you're having them go through a blow dry lesson. The associates are doing the blow dry lesson. It gives them an opportunity to connect with, their gu with guests, different guests and it gives them an opportunity to work on their blow dry finishing and you have your guests bring their tools but they must bring a friend with them who has never been to the salon. So what you're doing is you're building, adding new people to see the salon, you're getting the associates involved in it, and you're teaching your people how to blow dry their hair. Okay, now watch. I got my moisture out. That allowed me to get my moisture out. I pick up my flat iron and my round brush. Okay, now I'm going to flat iron the direction I'm going to take this, guys. So in other words, the volume this season is not about pushing it back to get the volume. Watch the volume I'm going to get on this, and I'm just working with how it naturally wants to grow. So all I'm going to do is take diagonal sections across the top here. Notice how I use my pinky and I slice. Diagonal sections. Once I have my diagonal sections, flat iron comes in, and I'm flat ironing this. Now watch, that's heat. If I want sits of volume, I camp out, allow that to cool. I release, and I move on. Another diagonal section. And I come through. Now watch me work mid shaft, mid shaft. Now I'm working mid shaft to ends, two ends, two ends. Everybody with me on this? Now we're about to go see them do step three. But I want you to remember something. After cutting step three, blow dry steps three and four together. And don't forget to flat iron as you go. Now, would you agree with me? There's many parts on one head, right? Yeah. You ever have a guest that says, my part, I only have one part, right? Yeah. So watch this. I could part her hair on the right side by combing it this way. So I could comb it this way, blouse, and there it is on the right side. I could comb it straight back, straight back, where's she at? I could comb her straight back, blouse, and I'll find it in the middle. I could comb it to this side, blouse, and I'll find it on the side. And that's where I think it wants to go. Okay, so now this is step four. Now watch what I'm gonna do. Stay right there, Stacy, here. I step forward, I comb this forward, guys. See that? And give it a twist going this direction. Remember, the idea is, is to help yourself so you're blow drying this and setting it up. So I'm here, and I'll show you how you're gonna get this to bend back and away. Okay, here to there. Now let's take a look at step three. Watch this. You stay right there, Stacy. Okay, here is step three, correct? Look how easy this is. Always remember, it went to the top of the year. Your last step went to the top of the year. That's step two. So now where do I go? Center back right here. So I'm going right back to that center back to where, Stacy? Right to the corner of the eyebrow. Yeah, so I go from here, insert your comb, and just draw a curve right to her eyebrow. So I bring that to her eyebrow. Now what I want you to do, if anything, I want you to make sure you're just slightly, not at it, but slightly above it. So I'm going to come back up. I'm going to put a little bit more of a slice down there. I like that one. This is part what? B. B. Good. Excellent. So this gets cut second. So I'm going to wrap that around what I have isolated. Okay. Once I have that, now this is A, correct? Right there. Now where do where you need to be on this one, Stacy? Okay, good. When you go to cut A, you're going to stand center back now, keep their head in an upright position. Okay, square your body to that, and you're going to move, comb all the way back to you. This is the old fashioned way for clips in this, how about that? There you go. Yeah. We like that. Okay, good. And you're not picking up any, don't pick up any of what you did. Okay, okay good. Okay, now comb comes underneath horizontal. Good, Vinny. Last cut, always, always underneath my last pull, right? Excellent, yep, that gets your elevation up. There you go, good. Now grab some of your guide, 
of what you cut. Peek right there, there it is right there. You see how we grab that, Rebecca? That's his point of reference for his guide. Now, Vinny, stop. I want this combed vertically back and then back to you. There, good. Now comb comes underneath horizontal. Good. Now horizontal from underneath. Now position. Now give me a sweep horizontal on top. Ah, that was horizontal on top. Oh, this one here. Yeah, cool. good. Cool, cool, cool. There, now that's what I want. Did you see that, Rebecca? Okay, Lois, stay right here with us. Good. Excellent. Up. And now horizontal. Yep. And I know it seems like massive hair, guys, but remember, it's gonna give you what you need. Now follow that angle down, Vinny. Follow it down. Excellent, good. Now look at how it gave you the length, and look at the graduation that you got out of that. Comb through it now, Vinny. Excellent, good. Now let's go to B. Okay, stay right here, ladies. Here's B. Square myself up. Yep. I'm gonna look for that section in the back. Good. Now remember, when you cut B, you don't pick up A. You don't pick it up. Good. Now if you say that's too wide, from front to back, split it in half if you have to. Well, let's do that. Just yep. Back. Good. Here's your guide. I have a piece of it already, but I'll get a little bit more. Good, excellent. Horizontal line, good body position, excellent. Now pick up the rest of it, good. I love the way he just kept some of that. See how he kept some of that line? Not just a piece of it. Because if you just keep a piece of it, you can change the line you're cutting. Up, cut, excellent. Good job. All right, so now here we are again, blow drying with a vent brush. Great brush to work with because you get that flow of air passing through. It can dry a lot quicker. What I'm gonna do is hand a paddle brush, and let's try a paddle brush. Now, here's the difference. When you blow dry with a paddle versus a vent, the flow of air doesn't go through a paddle brush. So it's important that you follow that brush. Follow it, there we go, excellent, excellent. And you're working side to side. Now this is one of the easiest ways for a guest to blow dry their hair, by wrap drying it. So they're wrapping it around one direction and they wrap it around another direction. This brush was one of my favorite brushes. Use it a vent brush. Now, I find I'm picking up a paddle brush. Why a paddle brush? Because a paddle brush can handle more massive hair. That's why I'm picking it up more. Maximum results with minimum effort. You have more control of the hair. Are you noticing that? that? Good, excellent. Now, what about the speed of drying? Is it quicker, faster, slower, or about the same as the, air, as I the vent? I think it's about the same, because you're more concentrated on the hair. Excellent. Good job, your haircut's looking really good. Nice haircut. Nice, now look at this. This isn't even done, but look at, she still has one more step and you can start to see the shape in it already. Beautiful. Now remember, keep, it, keep her nice and flat. She's gonna get frothy on her own. Remember, we're gonna teach you how to put her in a little bob too. Great job. Now we just completed the do in step three. One more step to go. Let's take a look at the C in step four. All right, let's take a look at the board first before we go on to step four because you're already there now. You've blow dried it. Remember this, you're gonna always blow dry the last step. Here's why, because that's where we're gonna go in and actually do a texturizing technique. We're going to point cut. Now all day long in this haircut, we have yet to do any texturizing technique. Everything has been cut very what? Blunt. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna take the top. Here is the left side part. We're gonna stay to the right side of that we're gonna position, put, put our comb right at the corner of her eye. Then we're gonna stand directly the center of our body opposite that. Isn't that interesting? That is the angle of my shoulders. That angle is the angle we take right across on the top on step four. We will then elevate that up to a, st to a stationary guide. Our guideline is the back crown area once again that we've been using as a guide on step three. We will lift that up, we'll point cut. We are not blending this, we're getting a visual blend and using that as a guesstimated guide. Allow me to demonstrate now. So I'm gonna take my comb first and I'm gonna look for the right corner of her eye. I'm standing over here because I choose to throw all the weight and length to the opposite side. 
Once you see your comb vertical, center your body to that. You are now in the proper body position. Your angle of your shoulders is diagonal. That is the same angle I'm going to take across this top. So I take that same angle across. I lift everything up. I'm going to take a little bit more hair. Everything comes up to me. Now watch. We sweep this. Just sweep it and pick up. Isn't that interesting? Look at the guide. So there's my guide. Everything that comes to that, I'm just going to take off. Now, let's talk about point cutting. I'm going to take the dry cutting scissor. Use the dry cutting shear. I'm going to go in and point cut. Now, when you point cut, a couple things to be aware of. I'm going to recommend you point cut hair when it's dry. If you try to cut point cut hair when it's wet, you're going to get it too chunky, and it's going to get too steppy. You're going to have more control of what you take out and what you see when the hair is dry. Let's talk about the technique, how it works. When you want to release the length, the scissor comes in at a diagonal. See that? It's at a diagonal. Now watch the action of my arm and my hand. My arm makes a half moon circle around. Now look how I'm in proper position. See that? Watch what some people want to do. Sometimes we get so much in a hurry, we bring our arm up vertically. Now look at my wrist. See that? That's improper position. You want to make sure that your palm faces away from you. Now look at my wrist. My wrist is perfectly straight. Okay? Everybody just do what I do with your pen. Be careful with the person next to you. Hand at your side. Go around behind their chair now. Up and around. And now your palm, exactly, your palm should be facing away from you. That's where your palm should be. All right, now watch the action now. When you're here, you've got to think about the angles you're going to cut. So if I want to release length, I bring it here, and I want to release length. Now check this out, guys. Look at it. I got that guy. Look at all the lengths I got. Now look at that disconnection. Look at that disconnection on top. I'm going to stay to the longest one. Okay, so I'm here. I come through. Now, because of gravity, look at my scissor, diagonal. So I'm going to work, work with gravity. I'm just going to turn my hand, but my scissor is still diagonal going against that. Diagonal, I release length. There goes the length. Now I'm going to come through. I recomb. I'm going to drop my left hand way down, and I'm going to fan into this. So I fan, and I fan so that I can read how much length I, excuse me, how much weight I want to take out. Like here, it's pretty thick, so I'm going to camp out, take some weight there. There, it's pretty thick, camp out. There, it's thick, and I'm going to move, keep moving, until I see that I release what I want. Then I release that. Watch the next section. Now, watch this haircut. Look at the volume I'm going to get. Watch, I'll give you a profile view of that. Check that out. Did I dry it going back at all? No. no. So this, if I dry this going back like this, just because they want lift, it's going to be too vintage looking. I want to give them today's type of volume. Question, Vinny. It seems to me like your, your shear is in one position and you're moving your left hand into it. Thank you, Vinny. Okay, so now watch. Once I'm here, let's talk about a couple things, and I hope this will answer it. See how I'm here? Okay, I'm gonna, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go diagonal. Now look at me bring the fan to that. See that? Now watch this. <laughs> Once I'm here and I got my length off, now I want to soften deep inside. Everything's coming back to... A stationary guide. Once I'm here now, I'm going to go very deep. So I go deep into this. Now look at how my scissor is parallel to the hair. So see that? I'm parallel with the hair. So now watch. If I turn that diagonal, what's going to happen? I'm going to lose what? Length. Excellent. So now I move the fan so that the hair stays parallel to my scissor. If I move my scissor, can you see I'll go diagonal? Did that make sense, guys? Yes. Vinny, does that help to answer your question? Yes. Excellent. Great. Now watch again. Here. And go deep. Look how deep I am. You can't be afraid to go deep. So you go deep. The dry cutting scissor is made to get through more mass of hair. Okay. And I touch and I close on the what? Way out. Way out. So I never close on the way in. Close on the way in, you're going to cut yourself, guys. So now you're going to chance. You get to start to see the sense of volume we're getting out of that. Take another diagonal section. If I come here and square my body and go across, what's going to happen? Yeah, I'm going to have what? Yeah, I'm going to have corners, and it's going to be square. So I'm throwing even amounts of length to both sides. Here, I'm choosing to throw everything to one side. Why, Sam? Glad you asked. Because I want this to be asymmetrical on top, it's going to be softer on top. 
and I want it to have a little bit of sense of versatility, as you're about to see. Okay, so we take that, we bring it back towards us, all the way back. Hold your head still, please. Okay, all the way back, hold it still, please. Okay, here, I comb through, coming back. Now, if I wanted the front shorter, what would I do? Thank you, Lois. I wouldn't over-direct as much. So I don't bring this all the way back to. So I just move my hand forward. Now look at this, guys. Look how that's getting longer. Look where I started. Okay, so I'm going to come through now. I'm going to fan, and I'm going to go soft into this. And look how by f moving the fan, look how the fan stays, the hair stays parallel to that. Look how I maintained my length, but I, the halo of length, but I knocked out the weight where I want to knock out the weight. Let's t take a look. What I'm loving about this, guys, is... This is meant to leave this front longer. Look at the sensuality behind that. Okay, all the way back and up and up. Back to me now. Here. So I put the hair so it flops towards gravity. That allows me to get to this easier. Because if it's dry, it just flops this way. Now it's forcing me to put my scissor deeper in there. Chances are you might cut yourself. Okay? Now you can't see that blunt edge that I come in, cut out of there, but you can see I still have my halo of length. Now let's come back to a natural, her natural left side part. And can you see, guys, at this point of the haircut, I'm done. That's what's great about blow drying as you go. You can see you get to a certain point, and you're right where you need to be. Okay, there to there. Now, at this point, I can come in, and I could soften and clean up any edge that I want. Now, let me show you a quick, easy trick on how to control that front fringe area by working with your flat iron and a round brush. Check this out. I want to go in and give this front some control. So I'm going to take a diagonal section here so that when I brush this back, it stays back and away from her face. So we're going to come through. Here's my flat iron. Flat iron. Okay. Now, once I've got the heat, I'm going to come through, and I'm going to go in, roll, and now I'm going to wave that. Wave. Wave, because that is hot on your flat iron, isn't it? So I just wave that. Look at that. Wave. I'm just going to relax. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Can you see that how quiet this haircut has been? The blow dryer hasn't been on for 20 minutes all the way through, flying all the way through. Blow dried it with control and I have an opportunity to communicate with my guest and just relaxing and letting that, look what that did. Isn't that cool how that works? And then that will stay back. Now I'm gonna do some right down here now. Excuse me? She just asked me if she could be able to do this at home. Would you agree with me that some of our guests are talented with, our, with their hair and some of them are not so talented? So I'm definitely gonna hand her the brush and the flat iron and let her go in there and try playing with this concept. Chances are some of them will be able to do it and some of them won't. But I definitely, as a salon professional, am going to take the time and teach them how to do this. So I'm here. I just come in flat. Roll it up like I would a roller. And now just slide my heat in. Slide my heat in. And then I just relax. And I let that cool. Now that was the C in step four. Let's take a look at the final do Step four. Now, you're going to center your body where now? Um, to the back of the section I'm working with. OK, good. So tell me where your body position is going to be now in relation to this. Well, do I start like right about here and Excellent. then bring it back to the crown? Good. Now, let's set up how you got that section. So what's the first thing she needs to do? Place what? Yes, thank you. The comb needs to go here. So you're going to put your comb right here on the corner of her eye. Now, see it coming out. Now, go center your body around to that. Excellent, good, beautiful. What's your little baby's name going to be? Bobby. Bobby, really? B -b -b Bobology, B -b Bobby. <laughs> All right. Okay, here we are, right there now. Look at the angle of your shoulders now. See that angle? Mm -hmm. Now that angle, look at that. There it is. Now look where you were standing and look at the section you wanted to take. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. You just got it. Give me five. That was good. Now your first section, look at that. That matches your shoulders. Now you take that section to match your shoulders now. Excellent. Perfect. Now lift that up and we're going to over direct to a what? Stationary guide. To a stationary Good. Guide. Excellent. We're going to over direct to a stationary guide. Excellent. Good. 
Now there, can you see a guide there? Yes. Good. Okay, good. Pick up more hair back here if you can't see it. Did you see what I just had her do, guys? Okay, good. Now can you see it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like the way she said that. A little bit more definite. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Okay, good. And there it is. Now tilt to hand. Elbow comes up. And now watch. Now hand comes here and it comes up and around. Ah, oh, perfect. Now look how that got. Now look how her wrist is straight. Watch what you may want to do. You're going to want to come in and you want to go like this. It's a big difference there, okay? Now turn around and there and now take length off. So the angle where we want to take length off goes what? Diagonal, beautiful. Okay, excellent. Now recomb all of that and take that left hand way deep down inside. Okay, good. Ah, go deeper. Got you kidding, Sam. Deeper. Yeah, deeper. Go deeper. Okay, right there. Now point cut that. Take that length off that you see right there. Yeah, good. Now go point cutting. Okay, now look at the wrist. Ah, now what did she do? This is great. Great learning you're having. What she did was you lifted this up and came there. Yeah. What did she need to do? Half moon. Half so from now on, you think, Sammy says half moon. Yeah, now look at that. Look how straight that scissor is to there. Now watch this. I want her to understand why I want her to learn this. You come up like that, you're stuck with one angle. Do you see that? Oh yeah, I like the way you're saying that. Here <laughs> to there, now you're straight in. Now fan. Sam, yes, there. Now, now move your fan to the scissor. Perfect. Go deep. Touch and close on the way out. Excellent. Beautiful. Now hold on, stop. Now I see a bunch of trees right there. Camp out right there. Keep opening and closing right there. Watch this, guys. Not, nah, don't move. Camp right there where you see it. Keep going. Now look what happened to the trees. Watch. Yeah. Now go look for some more trees. Where is it? Thick forest. Be nice to the trees, though. Okay, good. Now go more over trees. Or I see a lot of trees right here. Do you see what I see? So you see what I'm teaching her to see. You just don't point cut again across it, guys. Look and see where the weight is. That's what's awesome about fanning. Oh, I'm gonna cry, this is so cool. <laughs> All right, now, release that. Now watch this, where's your comb? Now if you do this right and you do it deep, look at the disconnection. See, you don't see it. That's the idea. So anytime I'm cutting blonde hair, you ever cut level 31 blonde hair? And you see the hard line there and you gotta soften that line there? Go in with point cutting. You just go in, so if I see a line, if I see a line here, I go and put my hand there, I use the back of the comb like that, and I bring and I take up what comes up. There's the hard line. Now I come in and I soften that. When I release it, it will soften. All right, cool. Now we're gonna watch her do one more section now. Take another, and back you go. Here comes your comb to you. Bobby would be very proud. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could tell. <laughs> okay, good. X, that a girl. Good. You're thinking. Good. She wanted to come up vertically, didn't she, in the beginning? Excellent. Good. That's what I like. Good. Then you're really learning then when you break bad habits, because habits are easy. It's based on your belief system. Excellent. Ah. Oh. Half moon. Half moon. <laughs> Give me a half moon. I got distracted. Half okay. moon. Good. Excellent. Can you feel the difference of how straight your wrist is there? Definitely. You're putting more pressure on this right here. Give her a round of applause. Great job, guys. Okay? I love your hand position. Okay, excellent. Now go in, touch and close on the way out. That a girl. Close now. Cut some hair. There, good. That's perfect. That way you will never cut yourself. You close on the way in, I guarantee you're gonna cut. Now look and see where you have weight. Look at the weight. Go where the weight's at. Yeah, and just stay there. Camp out there. Keep doing it. Now watch it disappear. Good. Blow at it. Good, now you can see it, look at, see, see, oh, this is cool, look what that just did. Now go right there, go where you see it now, start to identify it, excellent, beautiful. Good job, my dear, good job. Okay, now that's interesting point cutting there. Watch that wrist now, watch this. That was interesting. Okay, readjust, readjust that left hand. Good, now fan and point cut, beautiful. Now what I want you to notice there is look how straight your wrist is, Brandy. Look at where you want, where you had it before. Go where you were before, how you normally point cut. Can you feel the difference? Now watch this. Do that again. Now the other one. 
You feel that? That hurts, doesn't yeah. it? Just that little bit of pressure. Would you agree with me? Look at, in order to move the scissor, look what you gotta do with your wrist. Okay, now watch this. It's much better. You can feel the pressure it took off, can't you? Mm -hmm. There you go, good, yeah. Now, now touch and close on the way out. In this particular case, we're going right to a stationary guide. Everything brought to it. So see how Brandy's bringing everything back to a stationary position. And she cuts. Look how her hand, her wrist, is over. Her palm faces away from her. Her palm is not facing towards her. Excellent. Good job. Okay, nice finish. Really nice polished finish. Now let's take a look at your bob. Bring it back. Okay, whatever reaches back into this ponytail, you put into the ponytail. This season, make your elastic looser. Put it down here. Okay, then you go in and you blouse. There it is there. Take this excess hair, wrap it around your index finger. See, there. Now, that goes in. And then let, have them just shake their head. Whatever pops out is gonna pop out. So I have her shake her head. Whatever pops out, pops out. Okay, and that's what you want. Like this, I take some more of that in. Bring some more of that out. See, I just rake my hands on top. But it's just cool the way that you can get things. Now let's put her on the dance floor, okay? Now look at look how it looks like it's sliced into, just textured, look at that. This to me, guys, is definitely marketable. Would you agree? Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, you can sell it, you can market it, that type of thing. Now, they come back in, they're gonna go, you know what, I did my bob all the time, I liked it. So what would I do to this length? Just knock it off, but what's it have today? What's it have inside? It's got today's freshness and modernness going on inside. Cool? All right, excellent. Give it up for that. Good, good job. Thank you. Everybody's bob's gonna look a little different. It's gonna be based upon the degree of shortness that you have up on top. But watch this one. Eyes here, check this one out. Look at that one. Look at this one. Look how cool that looks. With the degree of shortness on that one. Isn't that cool? The way it works? Yeah, exactly. Now let's take a look at your cut. Okay, look at her top. Look at how cropped that was. How many of you were concerned about the degree of shortness on top? I was at first. Yeah, you were at first, but now look at it. Now I like it. Look at the, how cool it looks, but look at how long it is in the front. I love that. It's got a little bit more of a rock and roll feel to it. Doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Nice little rock and roll feel to it. You did a great job, Thank my dear. Thank you. Very good job. Look at the sense of looseness in that. This is what I'm talking about. Disconnection is the strongest element in design today. What it does is it creates a sense of looseness, creates a sense of volume, a, a sense of movement to it. It's beautiful in the way it works. The important thing is getting our guests to understand how it disconnects. Look at the profile view of this. Check out the profile view of that against a white backdrop. Look how it looks really textured. All solid blunt lines. That's what we're talking about the Aspire Tour. I hope you're Aspire. Congratulations. You have just completed the convertible. Now, if you happen to find there's excess weight inside of the fringe, here's a great way to extract the weight. If it's too heavy, like for example, this is too long, it won't stay back. How am I gonna get it to stay back? You're gonna take your blending shear. Your what? Blending shear. Your blending shear, okay? So I'm simply just gonna go through, find that side part. So I find the side part, there, I step to the opposite side, here, I'm going to take a diagonal section, I'm going to over direct it to me, because in beauty school they taught me, they said, Sam, cut a diagonal line here, and it's short too long, it will go back. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going to texturize that inside. There's my blunt blade, look at my blunt blade, it's that line, I weave that blunt blade in, so I weave that in, I close, I backstroke, open, close, backstroke. See how I just open and close and backstroke. Okay, then I leave that alone, take another diagonal section parallel to that, bring it up and over to you, and weave and backstroke. Open, close, backstroke. Now the backstroking, watch what it does. Keep your eye on this hair here. When I close on the same spot, look at what happened. Did you see that hair move? So it's never on the same line, it's the same spot. Did that make sense? Okay, now watch this. When I comb through this, comb through it vertically so that you don't pull on them so much. You comb horizontally, ow, sorry, sorry. Okay, so you want to comb through vertically. It's not going to pull as much. Just take a little bit at a time. 
and just work yourself through it. Any way you want to get tangles out, that's the best way to do it. Now, comb through it. Now watch what happens. I play, I've left my length, but I place a diagonal line of graduation in there that's invisible, you can't see. Now when I do this, you saw how heavy mine was. When I do this, watch what happens. Now notice how that stays back. For fine hair, you zigzag the hairline. How much bulk you want to keep out, put that in a ponytail, don't touch it, go through your pattern, touch everything inside, let the ponytail, and it's going to still have its weight and thickness. What you don't want to do to fine hair is cut into that hairline. So every time I have a fine hair guest, I weave them zigzag, put that in a ponytail, leave it alone, and cut everything inside. So you're saying with fine hair, if you should zigzag out the perimeter and not touch that, and then cut the haircut, pretending like that whole section is not even there? That's correct. So for example, eyes here, I go in and I zigzag the hairline. But how much I zigzag depends upon how much weight I want to leave down here. So I'm coming along the hairline, along the hairline, and I follow it. So can you see all of this is going to go into my haircut? So I'm applying all of this into step one, step two, step three, step four. This was pulled back into a ponytail, put in elastic, and never touched. So now, this will give me added weight that I'm going to need once I layer this out. Now, I will always do that to fine hair. Now, the guest sometimes says, Sam, but you didn't cut all my hairs. Listen to Sam's communication skills. Oh, I'm happy to cut all your hairs. If I blend it, it's going to look finer and thinner. Would you like me to blend it? No, no, no. Don't want it to look finer and thinner. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, cool. All right, now there was another question. What was another question? Yes, please. Okay, after you pull that back into a ponytail, how do you give it the same illusion of texture without taking um, like a razor or anything to it? Would you just chip back into it or? I chip back into it. Okay. Remember now, what a razor does to the hair as opposed to what a scissor does to the hair are two different things. Yeah. For example, if I go outside, I pull a blade of grass from outside, the blade of grass is thick at one end and very pointy and fine at the other, is it not? That's why it bends, okay? That's what the razor does to a hair shaft. So if I have hair that's broomstick straight, I'll go in with a razor, because I want that to be more pliable. So think about the hair. You have to understand. Understand the limits and capabilities of the hair, and you will understand the limits and capabilities of your tools, then you will understand what technique to use. In other words, there's texturizing techniques that go with a razor, there's texturizing techniques that go with a blunt shear. There's texturizing techniques that go with a blender. Each one of them affect the fabric differently. It depends upon the end result that you want to achieve. That was cool. If you'd like to learn more texturizing techniques, go to sanvia.com and visit our education section. All right, here we go now. Everybody hold your mannequins up. Hold them up. All right. Hold them up high. Be proud. Be proud. Come on, Woo! get them up high. All right, good. And look, associates, look around the room and look at your colleagues' mannequins. Now, everybody look around the room. Stop admiring yours. Admire everyone else's. Look in the room. All right, turn your mannequin facing that direction. So, and you are facing this direction. She faces that direction. Look around the room. Look at fronts. Look at backs. Look at sides. Look at the, direct, look at the, the difference in texture, the difference in lengths. Okay, turn her this way now. Turn her so she faces that way. All right, good. And... Take a look around the room, look at fronts, look at backs, look at sides. Now, face her that way. So she faces the back wall back that way. Okay, now turn around, look at the fronts, look at backs. Look at everybody's silhouettes, look at the finishing. Look at the degree of shortness. Okay, now shake her. Face her this way and shake her. Okay, make her say no. Okay, now she's at the dance at the club. How's she looking? Take a look at that. It looks like it's razor to textured, isn't it? Okay, flip her upside down and look for your sectioning. Look for your sectioning now. Can you see it? You can see step one, step two, step three, and step four. Four simple steps, guys. All right, bring her back up. And excellent. Mannequins down. All right, let's celebrate now. Everybody stand. Bring your mannequin in right here.
All right. Vincent Salon on three and the mannequins go up on the air. Are you ready? Did you have a good time? Yes. Did you learn something? Yes. All right. Vincent Salon on three. Ready? One, two, three. Vincent, Vincent Salon! Guys, I've had a great day with you. I can't thank you enough. Chris, Vinny, thank, thank you so you. much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Beautiful hey. salon. Now listen, remember now, when you do that haircut, you make sure you take that person and you do it on, walk around, show Lois, look at this is a disconnected I did that Sam gave us. Listen, and share it with everybody, all the team members that weren't here. It's been an awesome day. And remember, aspire for more, guys. Thank you. God bless. Thanks a lot. In addition to the convertible haircut, one of the great benefits of the Aspire Tour is moving from salon to salon. Now here's some great business building tips from Vincent Perry and Chris Lewis at Vincent Salon and Spa in Fort Myers, Florida. Vinny, Chris, a sincere pleasure being here with you guys. But when I walked in that door, this retail is incredible. Thank slammed you. it hit thank me you, right in the you. face well, thank you thank you that's the effect we want it to have it's almost like being at a retail store how you just well, that load was, it absolutely that was the inspiration thank you thank you but you know what i also noticed is you've got it categorized so you have your all soft on one shelf you got your color extinge your blonde glam smooth down you got it all categorized how's that help with the clients when they're flying, finding the products or the stylus how's that work for them either or right well it makes it easy for the guest to come up and find exactly if she has curly hair, she knows to step right here to Fresh Curls. If the stylist is coming up to, uh, to help them recommend products, uh, they have color treated hair, color extend products are all right there. And then of course visually, I think the colors work very nicely together that way as opposed to having them scattered around. Now when it comes to retail, what's the philosophy behind Vince and Salon on retail? Well, first of all, I'll tell you one thing, we change it up constantly. You, you'll come here next month, you won't see things in the same spot. Now, who is we? Who changes it up? Well, Chris does. Chris? Ah, <laughs> Absolutely. This is your decorator. Uh, yeah, Chris, yeah, actually, Chris, he's, he's, he's a driving force behind our retail. And you have done a tremendous job well, because what I'm looking at is, I'm, I looked up above here, I love the colors and how you've integrated some of like the, the whole concept of Vogue with the Redken products and your bags, colorful bags. Thank, Thank you. Great Thank job. You. Well, the color attracts the eye. And we change our bags up too, so. And Beautiful. I think it's important that when a guest is coming in the salon every six weeks or every eight weeks, that it doesn't always look like the same salon. Oh, that's they'll, great. They'll begin to look at your retail and not see it anymore if it always looks the same. So it's got to change. Very often we'll actually move the shampoo that was here down a row and back and forth. And oh, certainly, and certainly the product displays have to change. So when you do your displays, do you do them seasonally? You do, well, that's you think, a great you question. Think seasonal? Great question. That's the challenge we have in Florida because we really don't have true seasons. Ah, so that's true. I never thought so about we, that. We, we, we so we create seasons. Absolutely. <laughs> you create seasons. Absolutely. We do so take what season off are someone. you creating now, Chris? This is spring, summer. And let me ask you this. How is your retail? I mean, are, are you really a philo your philosophy on retail as a salon as a whole? How does your team respond to that? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. You know, as you're well aware, we are a summit salon. We're also involved with the T Spa schools, and Chris and I are owners of the T Spa School in Fort Myers. Salon Which is the Salon, salon Professional, Professional Academy. Academy. Right. Yes. Redken Fifth Avenue School in, in Fort Myers, Florida. And we do tie in our retail sales to gross sales to retention. Let me so, ask you this now. When you're, you're in your school, that is a, that's the Salon Professional Academy. So you're tying the retail into the school also. Oh, absolutely. It starts at the school. Oh, that's awesome. And that's how we have the level system, which we don't have to get into now, but it uh, one through four levels, and that's uh, one of the prerequisites for them to level jump. Well, I tell you what, I very much appreciate the fact that what you're doing with the younger generation in the business, because let's think about it, that's the wave of the future. Those absolutely. kids are the wave of the future. And it is incredible the fact that they're being taught good retail skills before they even leave school. Our goal Something I wish I would have had when I was in school. Oh, we're trying to get them salon ready is our goal. This happens to be my favorite area. I am just loving this. Mine Chris, too. thank you, thank <coughs> you. Tell me what you've done here. Well, actually, this is the room that changes the most often in the salon. This is the room that we use because clients go back and forth between the front lobby and the styling area and the spa area. They see this room on a regular basis, so this is where we change out all of the, uh, the this monthly specials that we're running or the union. Ah, so, so a little marketing. So the marketing goes on in through here. This is where we sell the product. Where uh, does your inspiration come from uh, for this? The inspiration for this particular one came from Front Row. Oh, Redkin's Front Row, great. Yes, fashion. That's correct. Right. Um, they were talking about what was fashionable for spring and summer 
and they were talking about safari, animal prints, patent leather. Uh, they were talking about bright colors. Um, they mentioned uh, uh, the organic look and feel that things were to have, and so we have this organic feel in the moss and the moss ear. <laughs> it's uh, wild, and the it? whole bit. I mean, we and really I, think it's what it, we do. He he made a lot of this stuff. He painted it. And Incredible. It, it You're very there. fortunate in terms of what you both bring together. Absolutely. You know, I mean, you've got a really good creative side. You got a business side. I mean, I'm sure you got both business sides and creative side together. But thank you. I think you know what makes a great partnership is the fact that you all bring something to the table. It's, you well, know, I think you do. How long have you guys been in business here? Yeah, we, we've been in business well together since what '86. Yeah. Since we moved to this location as four years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've been together since '86. How many people you have here, Vinny? Now? Sixty-eight total. Sixty-eight. People. So, it encompasses everything: salon, spa, day spa. What do we have? Yes, it's an interesting concept. We did things a little differently. Um, you know, if you notice, we've incorporated with the gym. This concept, this didn't happen. A group of us got together. We decided, hey, let's do not like a one-stop shop, but someone that had common Natalie and demographics. Okay, and so that's where the workout facility comes from. We have over 6,400 members there in that 64,000 square foot area. We try to find the best doctors to network with. We have three full-time board-certified plastic surgeons on staff to supervise our skincare program. Wow. We have a full-time PA. In addition to that. We really have really, really proud of our hair care part. Do you find that from the athletic club next door that you're pulling in a lot of new clients? Are they helping you in terms of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, there's That's no awesome. question about it. It's That's helped good. out a lot. And then, of course, the education behind the whole salon drives well, it, too. You mentioned that we had the board certified um, doctors that are here in the salon. We also yeah. have five Redken certified colorists here in five. one salon. One, five. five. You have five in the salon. I'll yeah. tell you what, if I was a color educator, I don't know if I'd want to be teaching <laughs> color. That's huge. What about, uh, I understand, maybe some American board certified colors? We have uh, also? three American board certified, certified colors. In as addition well. to, and in then addition. some pending, some going on That's too. That's awesome. exactly. incredible. Uh, it's you encourage. My understanding, isn't it, that, uh, excuse me for interrupting, but don't we have like the most certified? That is my understanding as well. So those certified. The most certified in one salon. In yes. one salon. Good in the yes. country. Thank you. Excellent. Now, how is your color business? Are you huge on color business? Our it, color business is huge. It drives. It Practically drives Practically every salon. client gets color. And on retail, is it based on commission? How do you run your retail? Well, Chris, you, you did your thing. Well, the retail, um, it's a sliding scale commission. So, it, so the retail is based on uh, what their um, gross sales are. So anywhere from zero to 20%, depending on, on uh, what their gross sales are. Gentlemen. Beautiful, beautiful place. Thank beautiful you. place. Thank I have you. some Thank more you. questions that I want to ask you. All so right. let's continue on. Absolutely stunning. Love hey, it. Hey, thank you. It is nice to be having a seat with you. Yet I just thought of something. As we were in that area, I saw a plaque that said 2004 Entrepreneurial Business of the Year. Tell me a little bit yes. about Can that. Can you believe that? Yes. I'll tell you. What's the scoop on that? Uh, you, you tell me. <laughs> I wasn't more shocked than anybody else. Well, I'll tell you what. That Number one, that tells me you're running a, a good business and you're doing it very very savvy so what do you think uh, enticed that made that happen in terms of the way you run your business well chris won't you lead in with well, what the award was about the categories and how we won overall well the, there were a number of categories uh that you when we won the overall award entrepreneur of the year uh it was judged on uh client philosophy uh marketing, marketing education uh, teamwork team philosophy client philosophy uh Marketing wasn't it? Marketing was on there. Marketing and promotions, and then they had, and then you had, you had to substantiate everything with your financial records. Yeah. So that was you know hard. it's all fine and dandy to say that you're all that, but they wanted actual documented from your CPA records. Yeah, Anderson School really of really Business were. at UCLA yeah. was an independent round bag auditor who did it all. That was interesting. What's re interesting about that though is if you think about it, successful salons today, especially in today's world with what's going on. I think having being business savvy is very, very important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. we, we can't continue to run salons the way that we used to in the past. So number one, congratulations to well, you. thank you. I also see how you continue to update things. We're sitting in front of an iView. How are you liking iView? And how's that working? What's happening with iView? We're loving iView. And not only are we loving iView, but our guests are loving it. What are some of the features and benefits of iView that you've been able to work with that the guests like? 
you know, it's 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 scary. It we definitely has tapped, my attention. <laughs> well, we we haven't even tapped the resources yet. It's, it, it, it's, it's we're trying to figure out what it can't do yet. I mean, it's got camera, it's got real live interactive. Clients can touch it's a touch screen application uh, for fashion. We can use it just to put people's. Uh, Profiles, pictures on, do hairstyles, it's unlimited what you can do. It has a camera built into it that can, can actually take your picture, put it on the screen, and then you can try on different hairstyles. Now, my, my concern would be, though, being able to control the head and then watching at it and getting excited about it. And... Well, that's the great thing about it. The way that it's on that arm, you can actually position it right in front of your client so it's right here in front of them so that their head is not turning this way or turning that way. It's looking right at we the screen. We can actually use it to control where we want their head. <laughs> I like that. I like, that's important. That's really important. It's um, also great with a consultation <laughs> because it has all of the Redken oh, products that's... loaded in there. And so the stylist can sit with their guest, discuss what products are best for their, their client's hair, and it's tied in with Envision software so that those products can be waiting at the front desk when that guest is checking uh, out. I, I, you know what, I love that, here's why. Talk about a cluttered station. Mm -hmm. You really don't even need all of that up there. You really have it here on the screen. It's Vision, you can see it, and boom, right to the front desk. Yeah. What about, uh, you know, I, I really uh, believe in, in a training kind of system. So uh, your associates, do they go through a training and do you train your people on something like this? How does that work? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, Absolutely. it's, a, it's, it's rather in-depth. Not only do we have the feed-in program from our Salon Professional Academy schools, we also have a 40-week training program in the salon. And we also have a level system there. And they do have to pass tests uh, in order to get onto the floor. And they do work with a level four stylist uh, who we try to duplicate the work and train them as they're coming along. So it's been really, really, really successful. Actually, our, our young stars have been coming up through this program. So it sounds like to me you're a Summit Salon. Yes. yes. And how's that working? It's working great. And would you suggest that to some of our viewers out there? Some of our Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, what has I, it done for you? It's, it's, it's given us a road map, a road map to follow, a, a system to follow. Um, sometimes it takes the emotion out of judgment calls on staff members. Uh, it makes you um, it makes you stop and take your time and pay attention to the people that work for you. We all get so busy, mm. and because of the tracking that's done, and because of the one on ones that are a part of the system, we sit down monthly with each one of our employees and actually talk to them about their performance, about how they're doing. You know, when you're really busy in the salon, sometimes you're just passing. You don't always have a chance to really sit and talk. Well, each one of our employees gets gets time every month to sit and talk with us. That's great. It's interesting that it's not always about numbers. Sometimes these conversations don't aren't even salon related. Well, I think it's more about that personal touch. Absolutely. And sometimes that gives you critical. insight into what's going on yes. with their numbers Absolutely. by knowing what's going on in their life. You know, I really believe that the high-tech world is very valuable in a salon, mm -hmm. very essential in terms of running business for tracking mm -hmm. systems, but I also believe that you can't lose the high-touch effectiveness that's important in salons today. I'm glad you said that because we actually use all of our high-tech to be more personal. To Excellent. gather information to help us be more personal, not Beautiful. to replace us. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. And you know, I, and I thank you for your compliments about our innovation and and our ingenuity and blazing trails and et cetera. But a lot of it's just tapping our resources. I, I personally like to thank Reich, and I'm sure Chris would. It's amazing the things that are available out there. I can't tell you how many times you you can how many times I pick up phone and say, Sam, what do I do about this? So I'm, I'm I'm into product. I'm into tools. But it's more how you use those tools mm -hmm. and having a basic understanding of knowledge of what you're doing, why you're doing it. And to sum up the summit, no pun intended, we're more on purpose. Excellent. And you know what? I believe it's more. There's. It's one thing to find some goals, but if you have purpose in your life and Absolutely. purpose in your business, then you establish goals. Then you can reach those goals. So I really have to say, what a pleasure, Thank and you. once again an honor to be here in Vincent Salon. Thank you. Tell me a long, how long have you two been together in terms of a part business partnership? How long has your partnership been together for business? We've known each other since eighty. Well, we knew each other longer. We started working with each other at eighty six. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, Chris That's... became a full partner in ninety eight. I think it was ninety seven. Beautiful. We've been together since, and we we defined our own. We have our strengths and weaknesses. Are you and both on the floor? Yes. We're both on the floor. Full and time? yes, I believe we actually complement each other pretty well. We work opposite schedules, and we try to work uh, as many hours as we can. Like, it could be up to 35 hours a week for me, sometimes as little as 20. It all depends on some of the things we do with the traveling and et cetera, especially going up to New York and, mm -hmm. and all those fun places. But well, we spread ourselves between the Salon Professional Academy 
and here at Vincent Salon. That's what I was just thinking about is you got you have a salon and you have an academy. And I think this, the Salon Professional Academy is definitely the wave of the future in terms of schools. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, thank you in regards to the Redken support. Uh, one of the uh, missions for Redken has always been to help you earn a better living and live a better life. Absolutely. And I think that giving you the resources that Redken has, it certainly has helped me. And I can see how mm -hmm. it certainly helped you to grow your business. So I wish you both continued luck and Thank continued you. success. Let me just ask you one thing, though. Tell me a little bit about your philosophy. Last thing I just want to ask you, your philosophy on education. What's your belief on education? How valuable is that to you? Do you feel it's valuable? Do you spend put a lot of dollars there? We How do you decide that? A huge. A ton huge. amount of money into education. We believe it's one of the most important reasons for our success. In fact, it's in our mission statement. You know, We're about community service, and we're about education. Uh, Awesome. And, that's, that, and that service. starts at hiring interviews. Mm. Because, you know, you can't expect everybody to want the same things you do. And we've got to be on the same page because then you don't work as a team. You're only as strong as your weakest link, correct? That's correct. So what happens is that, hey, we understand. We're not everything to everyone. And I think sometimes salon owners try to do that. You can't be everything to everybody because then you're nothing to no one. Well, I think it's one thing to dwell upon your success. And I really believe, as you both believe, that education is a must because things change and you have a choice. You can wait until your time comes back around again <laughs> or you can evolve with things. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that it's important that you continue to evolve. So Absolutely. once again, congratulations to both of you. Thank you very and much. And I'm looking forward to the class and looking forward to working with your team. Oh, we're together, excited. Let's we're continue, excited about it. Let's continue to grow together. Absolutely. Awesome. And Sam, thanks so much for coming. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. And off we go. Okay, great.